if a nonlinear system is locally linear, then the information about the linear system tells us a lot about the nonlinear one. But when is a system locally linear? Yes, okay, when the remainder r is small, but how small? And in this video, we will first see what we mean with locally linear, and we will see then how we can apply this to a system. We will then do an explicit example using three methods. An easy one, a hard one, and an even harder one. If you want, you can stick to the easy method, of course, I'll do the, although the hardest one is, of course, much more fun. So let's take a look. What is locally linear? So first of all, here, I drew this parabola. And locally linear means that about the point, say this one, we can really approximate our parabola by its tangent line. So close to this red point over here, you cannot see a difference anymore between the tangent line and the parabola. Then, if that's the case, then you call a function locally linear. So parabola at any point is an example of that. So what is an example of a function that is not locally linear? Well, if you have an absolute value, for example, like here, then whatever you do in the uh, point where they, they meet here, in the, in the origin, uh, you will not be able to accurately approximate your function by some tangent line. So this function is then not locally linear. But you see, I already had to resort to a pretty goofy example to find something which is not locally linear. For most of the cases, we will be fine. We will see a nice criterion for that. So what's the definition? Well, function is locally linear if you can approximate it by its tangent line. So the remainder, r of x, which is a function minus its tangent line, should be small, should be even smaller than something linear. So uh, even if you divide by x minus x0, this fx minus lx divided by this x minus x0, that should go to 0 as x approaches x0. So that is the formal definition, which is a bit annoying because you have to deal with limits. Fortunately, the easy method, we have a nice criterion. A function is locally linear if its second derivative is continuous. Because if the second derivative is continuous, you can use Taylor's theorem for the remainder and prove that you automatically satisfy this criterion over here. So, locally linear if the second derivative is continuous. That's the easiest way. Well, let's apply that to a specific problem. So, our system has the form x1 prime equals f1, x2 prime equals f2. Uh, we write that as x prime equals j times x plus a remainder. Let's do it for an equilibrium point in the origin. For another equilibrium point, you can use the same idea, of course. And you call it locally linear if this remainder divided by x uh, is equal to zero in the limit. So that's what this means to be locally linear. And fortunately, we have our easy criterion. The uh, fi's need to have continuous second order partial derivatives. So that is something which you can show relatively easy. And this criterion to show that is a bit harder. We will do this well, by the way, in the following example. So here we have our system with an f1 and an f2. So x1 prime equals f1, x2 prime equals f2. And we wonder whether this system is locally linear about the equilibrium points. Well, in fact, it's everywhere locally linear. But uh, uh, let's uh, take a look. Uh, equilibrium point is the origin again. So we compute uh, f1 x1 equals 1 minus 2x1 minus x2. f1 differentiated with respect to x2 gives you minus x1. Differentiate again this expression to x1, you get a second derivative. Differentiate this one to x2, you get another second derivative. And differentiate this one to x2, you get the last second derivative. So our second derivatives happen to be minus 2, minus 1, and 0. And they're obviously all continuous. So in this example, we have a locally linear system, locally linear about, uh, uh, for example, the origin, which is one of the equilibrium points. Now let's uh, try to you do the same problem uh, and uh, use the, um, uh, 
uh, def the definition of a similar problem. So we write x1 prime x2 prime equals matrix times x1 x2. So we are looking at the equilibrium point at the origin. Then we have some remainder. So the remainder is over here in this part and this part over here. So there we have our remainder. And in order to show that we have a locally linear system, we have to show that this uh, remainder goes to zero fast enough, this limit equals zero. A slightly sloppy way to do it is to say, well, put x equals r cosine theta, x2 equals r sine theta, and show that the uh, r, the capital R divided by the small r goes to zero as r goes to zero. So first we compute the norm of capital R squared. So that uh, uh, gives us the first term uh, and uh, the first term gives us r cosine theta times r sine theta, so r squared cosine times sine. So if you square that, you get this contribution over here. Then the second term, uh, which has to be squared, so we plug in r cosine theta for the x1, r sine theta for the x2 over here, r sine theta for the x2 over there. So the second term is a bit messy, but what you get uh, for your r, you get an r to the power 4 taking square root gives you an r squared uh, times some mass divided by r. So you end up with something of the form r squared times the mass of theta divided by r, but it doesn't matter what the mass is over here. If you take r to 0, you end up with r squared over r equals r, taking r to 0 yields 0. So indeed, our system is locally linear. This form of taking limits is a bit uh, shaky so let's do now the really hard way i uh, use the definition of the limit fortunately it's doable in this case so how do we use a formal definition then we have to estimate the norm of r in terms of the norm of x so how do we do that well the x1 is smaller equal than x1 squared plus x2 squared and then the square root because you are adding something so x1 is smaller equal than the norm of x so then we can estimate the first term here. So minus x1 times x2 squared equals x1 squared x2 squared smaller equal than the norm of x to the power 4. And then we can estimate this term over here. First you work out the brackets. 0.75 squared x1 squared x2 squared plus this uh, product over here times x1 x2 cubed plus uh, quarters squared times x2 to the power 4. And you can estimate all of them with the norm of x. So it is smaller equal than 0.75 squared times x to the power 4 plus 0.375 times norm of x to the power 4 plus this term. And those numbers here, if you add them all up, they are smaller than 1. So this one is also smaller than the norm of x to the power 4. So now we know, now we've estimated both parts in the vector. So we can now estimate norm of r smaller equal than the square root of this one plus that one because both of them are smaller than norm of x to the power 4 so that gives us uh, 2 times norm of x to the power 4 and the square root so we get 2 times norm of x squared now we know that the norm of x is smaller than some delta so this means that we have that the norm of r divided by the norm of x E is smaller equal square root of 2 times norm of x. It's coming from here. We know the norm of x is smaller than delta. So this is smaller than square root of 2 times delta. And we get it as small as we can get this as small as we want. Get it under any epsilon we want by choosing delta equals epsilon over square root of 2. So by adjusting our delta, by choosing the appropriate delta, we can get what remains as small as we like, which means that by definition the limit equals zero. And we have once again shown that our system is locally linear. So we have seen three methods which all show that this system here over here is locally linear. An easy one is the second derivatives uh, and harder ones using the limits. So for a quick check, I would recommend just to take partial derivatives and to check whether they are continuous or not.